Sweeping changes could be coming for rape victims here in Oregon that could make this state one of the most progressive in the entire nation. At 11 o'clock, good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Giannola. And I'm Jennifer Hoff. We learned there are more than 5,000 rape kits sitting untested for decades. Now those victims could get justice thanks to new legislation. Our Jennifer Dowling is going beyond the headlines now to explain. Jen? Good evening, Jeff and Jennifer. The bill passed the Senate and heads to the House next week. It requires the testing of all those backlog kits and requires testing of all new cases. Now, rape victims say right now getting your kit tested is like a lottery. He would go on and have at least eight victims that we know of in my neighborhood. Daniel Tudor was a victim of the jogger rapist in 1979. The statute of limitations at that time was only three years. Troy Gilmore attacked her in her own home. Police caught him when he raped a 13 year old in 1986, but it was too late for her case. There were eight of us who would not ever receive justice. So you know what my justice is? My justice is working on legislation. Tudor is fighting to push Melissa's law through the House to make the testing of rape kits mandatory. It's like a lottery if your rape kit is going to be processed or not. The law is named for 14-year-old Melissa Bittler, raped and killed in 2001. Her mom was angry to learn the killer's DNA sat untested in rape kits. Would a serial rapist been caught? Would he have been in jail at that time and unable to murder your daughter? Tudor has also heard from victims who wonder and hope their old kits will be tested, including a woman and her two roommates raped in 87. So in her mind, you know, she was hoping that it would be their kits. Sadly, Tudor says police can't find them in the backlog. There's no log. There's no way to track what happened to them. And, and the best answer is that they were destroyed. The new law would require that log and give detectives deadlines to submit the tests. Another bill heading to the House would also remove the statute of limitations on first degree sex crimes, something that would have helped in Tudor's case. And I think this legislation, you know, sends a loud and strong message, you know, that we do care. This is a shorter session, and with only about a week left, Tudor says the two bills need to pass within the next week. She plans to head to, to Salem to support both those bills on Monday. Back to you. Okay.